What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate, we're talking about expressions and functions, and we're going to talk about the coalesce function in the manipulations functions collection. So what is coalesce? Coalesce is the ability to pass in a string or an array or um, objects, uh, and then it will return to you the first non-null value that it finds. So you could pass in um, three different strings, um, and if the first two are null um, or empty, then it will return to you the third string if that one contains data. So let's take a look at it. So in Power Automate here, I've got a manual trigger flow, and I have three variables. I'm going to skip over these variables for now, and we're going to come back to them a little bit later on. I then also have a compose action. So in my compose action here, and I click into inputs, I go across to expressions, I scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we're going to click on see more in the manipulations functions, and this first option here is coalesce. So it says returns the first non-null object of the arguments passed in. So it's basically saying if any of the if any of the things that are passed in our null is going to find the first one that isn't and then going to continue from there. We can see that it's got a couple of parameters here. So it's got object one, object two, question mark, and then dot, dot, dot. Meaning that you can pass in uh, one object or multiple objects. Um, so you, the, the second one is an optional one. Uh, we know that from the question mark at the end. And then the dot, dot, dot means you can pass in as many as you like. So if I click into um, click coalesce, it'll go into the expression editor at the top, and then I can put a couple of things in. So I can put in um, null, for instance. So that is a null value. Um, flows around, treat it as a null value, and therefore it's going to skip over this for coalesce. Then I can put in a string of uh, Jedi, uh, put comma, and then I can put in uh, a Sith. Um, and once I'm happy with that, I can click OK. It's going to go into there. So this is basically saying I want to coalesce these three objects or these three strings. We've got a null, Jedi, and then Sith. So what that's going to do is it's going to skip over the null. It's going to go straight to the Jedi. It's going to ignore the Sith. So I click Update. You can see it's in there. And we can test this out. So we click on Test. I'll perform the trigger action. Save and test. Wait for it to run, run the flow, click on done, and then we can see the output. So we can see that it's skipped over that null value first and gone straight to Jedi, which was the second input that we had in that coalesce. Now, this also works for, um, so this works for strings, this works for objects, and this works for arrays as well. So we have some arrays up here. So these are variables that we skipped over earlier. These are arrays used in previous flows. So we have here, uh, this is just a JSON array called list. Uh, and then after that, we've got another um, JSON uh, list here. Uh, and we have a third one here, which is actually empty. So the first two contain data. So these two have objects inside of here. Um, and this third one is empty. So what we are going to do is we are going to add these into the coalesce and see what the results are. So we'll um, we'll cancel that out. We'll go to expressions and we'll type in coalesce. We'll choose coalesce. We'll open the brackets. Then we'll go to the dynamic content. So first we're going to choose list one, and then we're going to put a comma. Then we're going to choose list two. And then another comma. Then list three. And then that's all we need. So we've got a couple of brackets at the end, uh, coalesce at the start, so variable list one, and then variable list two, and then comma, and then the variable empty array. So if we're happy with that, we can click OK. It'll go into the expression, uh, the compose action down there, and we can test this out. So click on test, I'll perform the trigger action, run the flow, click done and we can see that this is output here. So we've got the Dean Herb, we've got Keith Taylor, Frank Bruno, and Matt Collins. So we've got four objects in this array, which 
represent the first array that we initialized. So we've got those four there. It does not include the second ones. The second one does have some duplication in here and it does not include the third one, which is empty. It just includes that first array. So basically it's looked through these results and it's returned the first non-null value. But what happens if we have an empty array passed in first? Well, empty arrays are not null. That's, that's the first thing to say. So an empty array is not a null value. So it's still, it's still a value. So what we will do is we will test this out. So we will put the empty array in first, and then we will put in list two and comma, and I'll put in list one. So we're basically reversing this order. The first one going in is the empty array. Then the second one going in is list two. And then the third one going in is that first list. So it's going to run through this one first, and then this one with the two items, and then this one with the four items, the four objects. Just hover over that. Um, that did not update, so we'll just do that again. Coalesce, we'll open the brackets, we'll do the empty array, comma, list two, comma, list three, click OK, it's gone in, I probably didn't click up, update last time, uh, and we can see that the empty array is the first one, so we'll test this out. So I'll perform the trigger action, save and test, run the flow, click done, and we'll go down to the compose action, and here we have an empty array. So, coalesce does not interpret a, a, an, an empty string, an empty array, or an empty object as being a null value. The only thing it treats as a null value is a null value. So essentially, if there's an array, even if there's no data inside that array, even if there's no object inside that array, that is still an array it's still going to be returned as the first value even though it does not contain data because not containing data is not the same as null. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Um, this functionality is not something that I've ever come across before but it's not something that uh, I'm not a developer so um, I'm sure this is used in developer terms quite a lot uh, but I can see a lot of uses for the uses for this, a lot of use cases so things like passing in data, checking to see whether it contains data or not, returning the first one that does contain data. So this is slightly different from the first functionality that just returns the first thing. This is actually looking for, a, a, for the first non-null object, the first non-null data that will pull him back. So I can see a lot of a lot of implications for this, especially around um, getting the right data back out and then using that later on. But as always, I want to know what you guys use this for, so let me know in the comments down below or um, find me on social media and drop me a message on there. All the details are at the end of this video. If you've liked this video, please like and please share it with your friends. It's always appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.